Is this $3,000 FLIR camera as good as this Thermal Master camera? Let's find out. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Rick. I'm an HVACR technician. One of the things that's critical to my job is being able to check temperatures, and I want to be able to check those easily and quickly as possible. One of the things I use is a thermal imager. So today what we're going to find out, is it worth spending $3,000 on a FLIR camera, or can a camera costing about a third of that do just as good of a job? Now, before you click away, I will be giving away this Thermal Master camera. Wow. Now, to go ahead and get everything covered right off the bat, Thermal Master did ask me to do the review on this. I said if you send me two of them, one to review and one to give away, I got to be able to give my fair and honest opinion of the product. If it sucks, then you know what? I want to be able to say that. So, today, what we're going to be going over is the Thermal Master Model Thor 001. This one has the micro lens, and we're going to be comparing it against the FLIR E8. Now, before we get too far along, I want to make sure you know that down in the description below, I do have a 10% discount code for the Thermal Master camera, so make sure you check that out. Now, I like to give back to my viewers for watching the reviews. Not only does this give you an opportunity to see whether or not this is a camera that you might be interested in purchasing, but I also like to give you an opportunity to win one. If you're interested in winning, make sure you watch the whole video. I'll tell you how to win that here in just a little while. Now, before we get too in-depth into the review of the unit, let's just go ahead and see what kind of quality of picture these put out. Now, what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and test these out on the steering wheel heater right here. Okay, we can see right there what the flare looks like. We'll go ahead and take a picture of that. And we'll take another picture here. And and we'll take another picture. We'll go ahead and take a picture with a Thor. There's one, auto saved. Another. Now we're gonna go ahead and show what the video looks like with the Thermal Master. Right here, we are not using the macro lens, so we could turn that on. Just kinda wanna show you what it looks like with the Thor with the normal lens with no macro. Pull back a little bit, makes it a little easier. Here we are using the fuse mode. You can brighten and darken the normal picture to the picture of the actual thermal imaging. There it is at 100%. There's an 80, 60, so you, and down to 40. I mean, you can really reduce it. So right there it is at 40% if you really wanted to reduce it. I don't particularly like that, but I suppose you're gonna have different instances where that might come in handy. Once you're back into the main screen, you can hold the trigger to go into video, or you can pull a quick click of the trigger to show the actual still picture. Now we can turn the actual MSX mode on, on the E8. It helps put things into perspective. It is a little bit better than the uh, fuse mode, I believe, on the Thermal Master, but you really don't need it that often. We're starting to pick them both up at the same time. Depending on the surrounding temperatures, yeah, we're really, really close to these things. This is made to go quite a distance out. You'll notice how easy this would be to see where you have broken lines in your actual heaters. Now coming down here, it's underneath the vehicle. You can see we're at over 320, so that would mean that we need to actually up our temperature scale uh, the temperature scale can be auto or it can be uh, up to 1022 degrees. So let's go into our settings and turn that option on. Here we were set for the negative three to 302. Let's switch it down to auto mode. That way it automatically switches. Okay, now you can see how clean, crisp and clear we're actually picking up. This is the flare here. You can see we're hitting somewhere in the 395 area on the exhaust pipe there on the exhaust manifold, depending uh, what type of temperature range, it switches gears. I do not like that. I prefer to stay in a particular area and lock it in. Uh, if you're recording, you cannot go into the menu. So let's go ahead and stop the recording. Let's go manually into the settings and change that gear to 212. The highest temperatures are all it's gonna show up on this setting. Now you can see how clear that is. There, we're at 334 on the middle of that bend. We come over here, we're 368 on that one. Now, if you compare apples to apples and we turn the actual image mode to just thermal only, which I feel like is more of an accurate representation of what the camera to camera looks like, you can kind of see that you can get a little more detail 
here on the Thor, you can see the crevices in the pipe. I think a little bit better. It's, you look at the band there, the band in the middle of that bend, you can kind of see a little more detail around the band. This right here is the Thermal Master camera. So you can see the temperatures as we go along. I'm not in auto mode because I don't want it switching back and forth, taking forever. Same positioning here. We're looking at it now with the FLIR camera. We've already taken a couple pictures and let's see far as the difference. Is it $2,400 more value here? I don't think so. I mean, that's entirely up to you. We can look at the LED lighting up there. We can see they're both coming in at a maximum temperature of 104 degrees. Where I noticed the biggest difference was out here in the outside. Uh, you can see the neighbor's trees much, much clearer than what the FLIR sees it. I like to do the thermal imaging outside during the nighttime. To me, it just shows up a lot better. Uh, we can see here outside the detail of the siding on the actual cameras is just more defined. You know, you gotta remember the Thermal Master doesn't have that uh, detail that the MSX provides, which we can turn the MSX back on on the FLIR. It doesn't do any good when you're at real low light. So we've got it turned on right there and it's not helping at all. You can see my LP tank out here. Uh, you can see the level a little bit. You can see a neighbor's house. That neighbor's house is probably about 150, 200 feet away. The detail of the neighbor's house there, you can see the roof line. It's just much, much more clear than what the FLIR is. The FLIR is on the left. I'm keeping it on the left-hand side. Just look at the clearness of the hook there on the left-hand side of the actual propane tank. And as we go across, look at how smooth this is. It's just like, look at the jitteriness. That's because you have a nine hertz refresh rate on the FLIR, whereas the Thermal Master is 25. So you get 25 frames a second versus nine frames a second. If somebody was hiding out in the backyard, you'd be able to see them no problem at all. Thermal Master does make rifle scopes that have thermal imaging. They also make little pocket thermal imagers. Uh, you can see here on the house, you can see the rafters and the outside joists on both cameras. Down here at the bottom, what you're looking at there is the concrete for the basement. You can see the infiltration coming through there. Uh, you, if you go to the center conductor there, you can see that that's 49 degrees and up on the wall is 43. So we do have a little bit warmer heat on the concrete because it's just a conductor of heat. All right, for my HVAC guys out there, this is a deep freeze right here. You can see the condenser coil in the walls of the deep freeze. It's pretty easy to see where the refrigerant lines are at. So right now we're looking at a metal barn out here. It's picking up the heat signature through the metal even, which is pretty impressive. There you can see it. Now, if that was leaking through your wall, you'd be able to see hot water or a different temperature coming through your wall. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and look at water heater that we were just running the hot water from. You can see the detail looks better on the FLIR only because of the outline that they have. However, as you notice, that doesn't always work unless you're in an area where you have enough light. Here we have the fuse turned on on the Thermal Master. You can see the outline a lot better. I mean, it's comparable, but not as sharp just because of the outline, the way they do it. There's no real heavy loads going on right now. Obviously something there, all the water heater. So you can see right down here, yeah, you can see that wire going to the water heater. Our next test is gonna show the accuracy of up close testing of circuits. Scroll down to micro mode, we're gonna turn that on. Now we're gonna go ahead and clip on our actual micro adapter here. Snaps right on the front very easily. Uh, you can see some of the traces right here and you can see some of the different circuits. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Now we should be able to see some of the circuitry start to increase temperature. You see 107 right there. You see how close you're able to get to it. Now let's go with the FLIR. If you look at it, it's just one big blob. Or even if we come back, you really can't see any real detail there. I would love to record video with the FLIR, but that option is not available on the FLIR. And when you can see where the traces are at. Yeah, right there is about our focal length. The focal length is 0.25 millimeters. So the device comes with this nice case here, which I've been running it around in my truck for a while. Nothing's gotten damaged and uh, it's protected the camera really well. 
It comes with a quick start guide, a calibration certificate. You can extend your two-year warranty to three years by registering it. The manual comes in multiple different languages. English section here, we have a total of five pages. If there's one thing about this camera that I did not appreciate was the very vague manual. The rest of this is all other languages. It would have been nice to know how to turn on the laser. Uh, I have not figured it out yet. But otherwise, a lot of your specs and stuff, they're not in the book either, so you have to look those up online. It's minimal, but it's just one of the things I found that I didn't like. I emailed them about it, and they said that basically they feel as though anybody that is going to be using this is going to understand how a camera works, which I've got probably seven cameras, and I didn't know how to do it. Anyhow, going deeper into the box here, we do have a USB cable. The unit also comes with a macro lens here, which makes it very easy to get up nice and close to any type of object that you want to get really close detail to. And of course, it comes with the camera itself. It does do 18 watt fast charging. It's supposed to have up to 10 hours, 10 and a half hours of battery life. You know, there's good and bad to everything. This has a removable 32 gig card in it. The FLIR, you have to actually hook it up to your computer to actually download it. Now we're gonna go ahead and time to see how long it takes for these to kick on. So we will hold the buttons for a second, hit start. They are going. Looks like Thermal Master's already got it ready to go. We're still loading over here on the FLIR. Okay, it looks like we are finally ready to go. It's still calibrating, theoretically, 55 uh, seconds to one minute for the FLIR to boot up. Now we are comparing the non-enhanced mode of the Thermal Master to the MSX mode of the FLIR. We still have quite a good bit of detail there. Let's turn the resolution back on. That increases it considerably more. It's quite a big difference. All right, as far as comparing these two together, they both have the slidable lens cover on the front. So they both have that. They both have camera on the front plus the thermal. It does uh, not have a flashlight. As uh, far as the menus, a lot more options on the Thermal Master. So we hit the center button on either one of them. You've got the settings on the right versus the left. So we hit the settings. You've got one, two, three, three banks there on the Thermal Master. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, and 13 options there. Back out of that, then you can go back in and actually look at your image mode. You have thermal versus thermal. You have visible versus digital camera. Thermal blending, which is the fuse. Picture and picture, picture and picture. Thermal, thermal. Then the MSX, and that's about the same as the fuse with the Thermal Master. The spot on the FLIR is either center or when you switch to one of the blue or hots, it gets rid of the center and just gives you an actual box to work in and it pretty much loses it. You cannot have all three or four, whereas the Thermal Master has both high and low along with the center plus the additional seven customizable. Both have auto off, photo settings on or off with a JPEG. So that's just some of the settings there. Obviously, we have a lot more options on the Thermal Master. Both have a rubberized coating on the outside. Both have a pretty big trigger here on the front. Obviously, the size of the Thermal Master is a little bit bigger. Now, they do make ones that plug into your phone, which is not the type that I like, but they do make micro small ones. So they must have chose to do this thing larger, I would think, for a reason. It is drop tested to two meters. Now, I will mention, if you think the Thor 001 is too expensive, you can also consider the $399 Thor 002, which has most of the same features, just without the macro lens. You can get 10% off that price with my discount code HVACRS10. Links are in the description below. All right, if you're interested, interested in winning the Thermal Master camera, be sure to check out the description down below. I am looking for a winner in the lower 48 US states. If you're not in that area, then you're not eligible along with whatever else I have posted down in the description down below. So please read that and look through it. Leave me a comment down below what you would do with the camera, why you think you should win it, and then I will be choosing a winner. At this time, I don't know what the dates are, so be sure to check that description and have your notifications on so that I can contact you. Be sure to check out my discount code down below. You can pick this up on Amazon or on their website, so be sure to check either one of those out. I wanna thank you guys for taking the time to watch the video. Let me know what you thought of it, and until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.